So on Monday the 25th of January, we're going to start on chapter 10, which is on page 90. Chapter 10, An Explosion. Day after day, the spider waited, head down for an idea to come to her. Hour by hour, she sat motionless, deep in thought. Having promised Wilbur that she would save his life, she was determined to keep her promise. Charlotte was naturally patient. She knew from experience that if she waited long enough, a fly would come to her web, and she felt sure that if she thought long enough about Wilbur's problem, an idea would come to her mind. Finally, one morning, towards the middle of July, the idea came. Why, how perfectly simple, she said to herself. The way to save Wilbur's life is to play a trick on Zuckerman. If I can fool a bug, thought Charlotte, I can surely fool a man. People are not as smart as bugs. Wilbur walked into his yard just at that moment. What are you thinking about, Charlotte? he asked. I was just thinking, said the spider, that people are very gullible. What does gullible mean? Easy to fool, said Charlotte. That's a mercy, replied Wilbur and he lay down in the shade of his fence and went fast asleep. The spider, however, stayed wide awake, gazing affectionately at him and making plans for his future. Summer was half gone. She knew she didn't have much time. That morning, just as Wilbur fell asleep, Avery Arable wandered into the Zuckerman's front yard, followed by Fern. Avery carried a live frog in his hand. Fern had a crown of daisies in her hair. The children ran for the kitchen. Just in time for a piece of blueberry pie, said Mrs Zuckerman. Look at my frog, said Avery, placing the frog on the draining board and holding out his hand for pie. Take that thing out of here, said Mrs Zuckerman. He's hot, said Fern. He's almost dead, that frog. He is not, said Avery. He lets me scratch him between the eyes. The frog jumped and landed in Mrs Zuckerman's dishpan full of soapy water. You're getting your pie on you, said Fern. Can I look for eggs in the hen house, Aunt Edith? Run outdoors, both of you, and don't bother the hens. He's getting all over everything, shouted Fern. His pie is all over his front. Come on, frog, cried Avery. He scooped up his frog. The frog kicked, splashing soapy water onto the blueberry pie. Another crisis grown fern. Let's swing on the swing, said Avery. The children ran to the barn. Mr Zuckerman had the best swing in the county. It was a single long piece of heavy rope tied to the beam over the north doorway. At the bottom end of the rope was a fat knot to sit on. It was arranged so that you could swing without being pushed. You climbed a ladder to the hayloft, then holding the rope you stood at the edge and looked down and were scared and dizzy. Then you straddled the knot, so it acted like as a seat. Then you got up all your nerve, took a deep breath and jumped. For a second, you seemed to be falling to the barn floor far below. But then suddenly the rope would begin to catch you and you would sail through the barn door, going a mile a minute, with the wind whistling in your eyes and ears and hair. Then you would zoom upwards into the sky and look up at the clouds and the rope would twist and you would twist and turn with the rope. And you would drop, but then and then you would drop down, 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 out of the sky, and come sailing back into the barn, almost into the hayloft, and then sail out again, not quite so far this time, and then in again, not quite so high, and then out again, and then in again, then out, then in, and then you'd be, then you'd jump off and fall down and let somebody else try it. Mothers from miles around worried about Zuckerman's swing. They feared some child would fall off but no child ever did. Children almost always hang on to things tighter than they think their parents think they will. Avery put the frog in his pocket and climbed to the hayloft. The last time I swung on this swing, I almost crashed into a barn swallow, he yelled. Take that frog out, ordered Fern. Avery straddled the rope and jumped. He sailed out through the door, frog and all, and into the sky, frog and all. Then he sailed back into the barn. Your tongue is purple, screamed Fern. So is yours, cried Avery, sailing out again with the frog. I have hay inside my dress. It itches, called Fern. Scratch it, yelled Avery, 
as he sailed back. It's my turn, said Fern. Jump off. Fern's got the itch, sang Avery. When he jumped off, he threw the swing up to his sister. She shut her eyes tight and jumped. She felt the dizzy drop, then the supporting lift of the swing. When she opened her eyes, she was looking into, up into the blue sky and was about to fly back through the door. They took turns for about an hour. When the children grew tired of swinging, they went down towards the pasture and picked wild raspberries and ate them. Their tongues turned from purple to red. Fern bit into a raspberry that had a bad-tasting bug inside it and got discouraged. Avery found an empty candy box and put his frog in it. The frog seemed tired after his morning in the swing. Children walked slowly up towards the barn. They too were tired and hardly had any energy to, enough to walk. Let's build a tree house, suggested Avery. I want to live in a tree with my frog. And now the questions. You can answer the questions in your purple book. Have a look and see. I'm looking forward to hearing your responses.